You still suck at this. <laughs> so stop worrying about these. So this is me telling you, if you still suck at this, then stop doing these. If you're grossly ignoring your sphere of influence, your database, then you're also going to not be a very good farmer. And stop farming until you start doing this at a higher level. This is permission of going, there's so much to do, what do I do? Go to database. Is that fair? Veterans in the room? Yes. Agreed? And then when you get this going, say, sweet, I've at least got some predictable results from this. Now let me go build. Now I got this going, now let me go build. Page one of the one thing says if you chase two squirrels, no, rabbits, wrong animal. <laughs> chase two rabbits, you'll catch neither one. There's one, there's one. I'm going to go over here, I'm going to go over here. So the guy I was texting before was like, your Fizbo's expires. I dabbled for like two weeks straight. I knocked on the Fizbo's door every day. I went home from work, knockity knock, knock, knock. Some <laughs> threw me off, sent their dogs. Some were super nice. And so I two weeks of Fizbo work. I did three days where I sent expired letters out. I was like, no, I don't do it. I have done it, but I don't have consistent results. Now what's kind of cool is from one of those Fizbo door knocks out of 15 people, Found out he was moving to Buffalo Grove, Illinois. I had his information. I called him Buffalo Grove, Illinois agent. I said, I've known this guy for about two and a half minutes. He probably won't even recognize my name. But here's all of his contacts. He's coming to your city. So it's sweet. And I texted him. I said, I made an intro for a Buffalo Grove agent. He says, oh, my friend Ward, who works there, were good things. <laughs> Three months later, agent I referred to has Thanks so much, Javier's under contract. We're closing in three weeks. Awesome. Where can I send the referral check to? I'm going, sorry, who? <laughs> <laughs> Run it off, forgot. But his either his friend was a defense mechanism or his friend dropped the ball, so he went to the next person who was working at him. And she got the referral. Sweet. So those door knocks paid me $3,400. And I want to go back and do more, but you know what? I still suck at this. <laughs> I'm not good. Does that make sense? I think a lot of us, we see these big, amazing ages, like, oh, I'm going to do what they do. I'm going to go farm like, like Gene Scott Holmes farms live oak. I'm going to be a farmer. And your database is grossly neglected and ignored. Stop. Go master that. Make sense? Questions? Clarity? Does it help? Does like, anyone have relief a little bit? <laughs> okay. This is on page 14. 14. Yeah, something. MREA book. I think it's 137 or 138. It's I think it is 138. Yeah. 137 is the bullseye model. If the MREA book, this chart is there as well. Awesome. Uh, here's your examples. When you write your business plans, and I say, what are your, your strategies, your activities, and you say, or, or what are your sources? Door knocking is not a source. It's an activity. It's a method to the message. Because could you door knock your sphere? Yes. yes. Popeyes, right? Yes. Could you door knock your farm? Yes. Of course. Could you door knock um, open house? Absolutely. Could you door knock Fizbo's? Could you like expires? Sure. Everything that I said, could you? Those are the sources. The door knocking, you have to door knock everything of your source. Excuse me. You should. You will increase your conversion rate. Calling. Yes. Face to face eyeball meetings. Yes. Insert the source. Should you have face to face meetings with your farm? Yeah. Yeah. Should you have face to face meetings with your expires and Fizbos? Mm -hmm. sure. With your investors? With your database? You see how activities should be done for every one of your sources? So don't mistake, this is, I'm a door knocker. Around what source? What's your message around your door knocking? Why well, I do it around open houses, cool. Open houses is your source, and you know now cold call, direct mail, email, social media, and door knock, the open house. Does this make sense? 
So keep in mind that if you're not only doing three of those five activities, you're decreasing your odds of conversion. Because I've heard I'm not a cold caller. Well, I hope you have enough friends then. Because I'm cold calling old acquaintances. I haven't talked to them in six and seven and eight years. That's a cold caller. Nicole's like, out of the blue, no reason to call you. So you probably are a cold caller. So stop hiding like you're not. Okay, let me just see what I wrote down. So many agents, you'll laugh at this, Jessica. So many agents do the spur of the moment, idea of the month. <laughs> Prospecting and marketing. Because you heard something here in class today, like, ooh, I'm going to do that. <laughs> you guilty of that too? About 10 things. So resist the idea of the month. Figure out the models. Stick to it. <laughs> breathe through it, Cynthia. Breathe through it. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to read the whole paragraph. So many agents do spur the moment idea of the month prospecting and marketing. They adopt new lead generation programs for the fastest, greatest, best, and most creative idea ever seminar. Or else they reinvent their program based on some can't miss, pays for itself, instant success program. It will never bought the, it'll pay for itself if I just get one deal from it. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> then they're off and running, spending money, discarding all the previous strategies and going whole hog, the latest inspiration. While marketing can be fun, exciting, and downright entertaining, it is simply not the way the millionaire real estate agents go about their lead generation. Notice I didn't say the agents talking to you. I said the agents are the people who were proven to do this. They're the ones who say, eyes the prize. They're not the ones going, ooh. Does that make sense? We're all guilty in this room at some point because that's our DNA. That's why we're realtors. We like to quit fun and shiny. The millionaire real estate agents always begin with a tried and true. They do that first. They do it with a plan. They do it with a budget. They do it with a message. They do it with a target audience. Based on a survey that they conducted in 2017, the top lead gen sources for millionaire real estate agents were online advertising, sphere of influence, repeat business referrals, and offline advertising such as radio, direct mail, yard signs. This does not mean that these sources that are what you need to implement, because we can discuss how you can implement around your strengths, your budget. Does this make sense? Yes. If at any point you felt like I was talking directly to you, awesome. <laughs> working. We have about an hour left. I told you to the two medias. So here's Capture. Now we have a 19 to connect campaign. What does this used to be called in MRA 1? 36 touch. To connect was different. That would be like to establish contact, cement the relationship to 8 by 8. It used to say 8 times, you're there. Now what is research telling us? 19. Oh, more than twice as much? What's changed? What's changed in 20 years? Technology. Technology. The ability to get to people's attention span. Definitely. <laughs> Spot on. The attention span and the amount of other people that are inserting in front of you. It used to be if you had someone on a mailer, they only saw you. Now they can't not see anybody else. You got a constant, sorry, <laughs> splash zone. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have a 19 to connect? When you meet somebody to cement as the expert, 19. I got a thousand names from that wedding expo. I met 94 of them. A thousand times 19 says that's cool. I only have 19,000 more contacts to make. <laughs> if I did it, I'd have a thousand people I've cemented. Right? Once you've gone through the 19 to connect and you are connected with them, and I call up this person and he has me saved and says, Hey, Rick, Bill is good. Chicago's not. And we have the rapport, is when I'm doing a 36 to convert. So the 19 touches, is it a year? 
Mm -hmm. Well, it's, yes. Okay. okay. And that, that, I'm more than that. That's the Captured that. prospects are people, captured, are people that you've had the right to have at least a one-way conversation with. So you, after that 19, then they consider that a connection. The, yes, once you've connected, this is the progression now it might of the take, relationship. It might be three. It might be 23. Right. <coughs> and this is inclusive of your your um, past clients, anybody in your database, right? If you've been, if you've lost touch with them, we've got to reconnect. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. just want to make a comment. It's too easy nowadays to leave text and not pick up the phone. But I've had too many people that I have talked to that even if I leave a voicemail, it is so much more effective as far as them remembering you when they need you or need to refer you out than just texting or emailing and hoping that they remember you. Great, great point. I think one step further, they really remember you when they get a letter or card. I agree with that. When mm -hmm. they get something handwritten every single time, I get a comment on that. Absolutely. So, are we writing up your notes? With your system, who gets the handwritten notes? Every morning I go through Facebook and I look at tomorrow's birthdays. And if I have a dozen of a connection and relationship or I have your address, you get a birthday handwritten note card from me with a lottery ticket. Happy birthday. And I put it in the mail. Use it. That's the best idea, right? Right? Well, and it's, yeah, she'll do like $20 tickets, so get on her friend list. <laughs> <laughs> And then I'm going, <laughs> all right, I don't, I don't have their address, it's not connected, so tomorrow I'll write, maybe I'll give them a call. If I don't have their phone number, but we're on Facebook friends, and I'm at least, and when I do it, it's not like, hey, Cindy, HPD, smiley face. Because how many of those does she get? You know what I found expected? I did it by accident. I give them a birthday thing a day later on Facebook. And I just did it now, I said, hey, sorry, a day late, but I missed all the traffic. Put in some sort of touch. They're absolutely read it because they're not just going, well, you're number 197. Right. Like, 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 like. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for my birthday wish you. Right. There's nothing memorable about that. Right. Maybe strategically do it a day later or a day earlier. So I'm going to beat the traffic. Here I am. And do something that's going to connect or engage your response. You ask a question, you bring up an old memory that they're going to laugh and comment on something. And frankly, on my Facebook, it's very refreshing for me right now. If I'm going, no clue. I unfriend people every day on their birthday. <laughs> like that's my, when you're going to lose me as a friend, because it's your birthday, and I don't even have the relationship to wish you have a birthday, you're off. And so every day I delete about five or six people. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. That's really nice. Because I intend to be able to make Facebook purposeful and deep versus casual and wide. So when I do it, I'm also tagging them with my move letters. I'm tagging them if they're local or out of state, if they're a realtor or not a realtor. And I'm, Facebook is a big component of my database right now. So I can go in there and target market people based on how I associate with them. Because it's, it's what I've been working on since I was in college. The building my Facebook database, right? Thought on that? Just a real quick, quick question. Someone brought to my attention recently how if you comment back, and I'll hit just like, Because you had your birthday. I did so that, that way we can end up keeping in touch with each other a lot more. The same because thing. there's too many people I never get any of their stuff because, again, I don't know exactly how Facebook yeah, works. <laughs> well, and it's a great comment that says, oh my gosh, thanks so much for thinking of me. When's your birthday? So I make sure I don't forget it. Right. And now you're getting information to put in your command, your database. I believe when you would instant message them also to Facebook, you do get into their feed while you do. You do. Yep. Yeah, just one more. So you would get. So it's probably easier to do it that way versus on their feed. Yeah. I literally uh. searched someone, liked one of their pictures, just so that they'll show up on my feed more, so I can keep up with that. Yeah. Well, well, here's a good testimony. Uh, some something that Facebook annoyed me. Like actually, it's fun now that I'm okay deleting friends, because if I see one of those posts, I'm like, that's a dumb post. I just like unfriend you. I don't. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't 
It's someone who I have zero relationship with. So we wake up and I don't even say, I have this, this is for me. I had the 5,000 max friends and made a living off of friending agents. Guess who no longer I want to be Facebook friends with? I'm going to go prospecting them. All of you guys. I don't need to be your Facebook friend. We're friends in real life. I don't need my news feed full of your stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I do. I put local realtor out of state realtor. But to that point, I didn't know this lady. And like, there's your relationship. I, once upon a time, I accepted because we had 12 mutual friends. I was like, oh, surely we have 12 mutual friends. I told my guy friend too. Yeah. My, my gut check is, would I recognize you or wish you had a birthday if I saw you face to face? If I wouldn't, I'm like, then I'd get off my page. Yeah. Or, if I needed more, I might go out there and engage that relationship. And so, a testimony, we'll move on. Old, so I was a bartender at Bennigan's in college. This would be 2001, 2002, 17 years ago. Old bartender friend is there, and she did one of the um, Be Truthful, send me the fifth picture on your phone. Oh, yeah. I'm like, mm. <laughs> But this is someone who I wanted to reestablish and engage with. So I played. There's a picture of my kid, even if it wasn't the fifth, but like, you got to pick the <laughs> oh, It might have been like someone I kicked off to run a mastermind page. Like, that's not a good picture to send. But... <laughs> and then it engaged. And then two weeks later, she sends me a referral. And they closed six weeks later for 250 oh. Nice. Because now all of a sudden, I'm like resurrected in her mind. So you said we got to engage. <laughs> that was my opportunity to connect with her again. Yeah. So I did do it. I'm going because when I see that, I'm like, I don't want to play these games. Yeah. Sometimes you do because they want you to play. And I want to be your friend again. So I'm going to play you some. And it works. So anywho, we'll move on. You guys know you can add contacts and command through your phone. Yeah. Hey Kelly, add a contact. That's it. How about your database? How many of you say it's less than 250? How many of you say it's 255? Five to 1,000. 1,000 or more. You're talking about METs, right? How about your database? Who are you working? Who are you doing this or this to? How about your database? Was that? Uh, just under a thousand, but not all of them I actually pick up the phone and call every quarter. Okay. What's stopping you from calling all of them? Why do you get to choose? I used to uh, until I realized, okay, what is what is the best use of my time? If I look back at all my notes and all the constantly was left message, left message, left message, and nothing, never got a response, never opened up my email, things like that. I'm starting to clean them out. And if they have looked up, uh, looked up some of the campaigns, but they still never returned a text or never returned a phone call, never heard from them for so many years, I put them on basically just the 36 Automatic drip. It's your equivalent of kind of Facebook ignoring. Yeah, yeah, so again, just trying trying to narrow down my best use of my time. So I don't know if that's the right or wrong because I'm doing a lot of self-talk and trying to figure it out. Um, there's no right or wrong because literally the, the wedding expo, I just got a database. I met 94, I met 10% of what they just sent me. And in six months, if I don't do anything with it, I'll know zero of them, right? It is a database. What well, if I choose to work it? Now, the only reason I wouldn't choose to work all thousand is what? Time. What she said, that's the time. That's the only thousand you have in it. Starting off new, it's great. I'm teaching a time management class on July 31st at 2 o'clock. Yes, yeah. I think it's 2. Ironic, right? Still says 3. I think it's 2. It's fine. Ironic, that's the class that's wrong time. Should I change it now? Yes, don't show up at 3. Yeah. 2 o'clock. Here's the moral of how that class is going to go. Decide when you're going to work, when you're going to stop working, and do one of two things. Find clients or service your clients. The end. So I don't need to come to class? Yeah. 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 Y
That's it. Now, we, <laughs> now, <laughs> now if we want it, I, I told her this. She's like, how long do you need? It's like 30 seconds, maybe? <laughs> because that's it. We're going to unpack the limited beliefs and the habits and disciplines around that. So just a little plug for that. But at the end of the day, you're either taking care of your clients or finding your next one. And if you ever look at your day and kind of go, oh, I've got nothing going on today. Crap, you don't. Go find a client. So you've got nothing going on. Because if you're my employee, I would expect you to be here until this clock. You're just going to go home at 2 because nothing's going on. You go, go find someone. Right? I think sometimes we let ourselves off the hook. Yeah, so pretty, pretty slow for the rest of the day. I think I got all my stuff done, so I'm going to go check out and go do these things. No, you're fired. I get so boxy here at this point. It, it's like... <laughs> it's, it's, it's perfect. <laughs> it's the lead generation numbers game. Uh, they're telling us some something of if you convert 100% of your people to do 350 deals, actually, then we're going to back it off. You guys know how many deals you need, right? Based on your economic model? Does your database and your deals, are they, are they in alignment? Now, when we said if 100% of the people in your database use you, then you will get 10%. Because 1 in 10 people need a realtor every year. 90% of the people, they would use you. They just didn't need you this year. They didn't use you. 1 out of 10 need a realtor. If you have 100% of them, they will choose you. If half of them choose you, you'll need 7,000. If a quarter of them choose it, you'll need 14000 The only way you'll know that is if you call and you find out that they did not choose you. Has anyone ever experienced that call recently and you threw up in a bucket? Oh my gosh, I wish you would have reached out last week. We just listed our house with a lady who knocked on my door. <laughs> and the worst is when they don't realize how much it hurts you. Yeah. <laughs> I got an old co-worker... In my call, she sent me her new co-worker. We're an escrow under contract. Yay, Mary's a raving fan. Thank you, Mary. Last night, she sends me a text that says, check out my sister's listing. Isn't it beautiful? <clears throat> in Kissimmee for like $2.90. I'm going, sure is. And then I found out who the realtor was and screenshotted it in a circle. It's like, who's this doofus? <laughs> We're friends. I wouldn't say that publicly. I get, am I recorded still? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Yeah. But what's interesting is she's like, yay, look, my sister's come sell her house too, fire agent. And so I had to, people wrote a conversation to create around them. Kind of, you know, I could have helped. And whose fault is that? So I know that I'm not here because if I was, you I'd have a sister. Just kissing me. <laughs> yep. So the number they tell us to go for is 50%. <coughs> Let's plan for 50. Let's plan that half of our database will actually use us. And so if you have, uh, it says page 17. Does that work for you guys still? Yes. Awesome. So if you have 900 database, and we know that a tenth of them will need a realtor, and you will convert half of them, how many opportunities are in this database? Forty-five. I heard her say it. <coughs> so, what is your unit goals? Units sold goal. Write that number down. You did your economic model. How many units do you need? Take that number and multiply it by ten. Your unit sold times 10 divided by 0.5. Cynthia, I'm using you because you are great at numbers. What is your unit sold goal? 
36 times 10 is? 360 divided by 0.5 is? 720 is who you want. But they got you. You call them up, they're like, hey girl, how many do you have? How many do I have in my database? database. See, I, my database is like all three, but so I only have about 60 that really would. Okay. Yeah. This becomes, remember that first time, I'm not going to go all the way back, but stop doing everything else until you get 720 people that you are just deep with and you work. Now, if we take 720 people, this is what she needs to close how many? 36. Equals 36. So if you're not 36, then just you can do some math. We want at least a quarterly phone call to them. Agreed? Because if we do event, can't we just kind of mass invite to the events? If we do emails, can we mass email? If we do newsletters, we can mass. But the phone calls are like the individual time takers. Agreed? So we're going to have to do 720 times 4 calls equals 1440, 2880. 2,880 database calls a year. 720 birthday cards. If you do just these two, and by the way, these calls, that's a method. Your message becomes super simple because you invite them to one of your three events that you're doing for the year. Or you say, thank you for coming to one of my three events for the year. Either way, we can package around the message around this call, put in a call to action asking for business or referrals, and come to my brewery. And then the birthday card, I'm pretty sure you're locked in. Because you send them an email, you send them a monthly, this is the market, say here's pictures from our fun events, Thanks for coming. Now I'm going to prospect to you. Now what's 2,880 divided by 12? 30. What is it? 240. 240? On the dot? 240. Yeah, 240. Sweet. Yeah, 240. 240 per month. What's 240 divided by 4? 60 per week. What is 60 divided by 5? 12. 12 a day. Okay. What is 720 divided by 12? 60. 60 per month. 60 <coughs> divided by 4 is 15 per week. 15 divided by 5 is 3 birthday cards on average per day and 12 calls. 15 outgoing things will do your 720 person database prospecting. And even if you only convert half of them, we'll give you 36 closings times your average commission of 7,500. You do the numbers. What's your net off of 36? Oh, um, $250,000. Yeah. $250, 12 calls per day. Just curious, what is 228.80 divided by, uh, no, 250,000 divided by 2880. What is it? 250,000 divided by 2880. 86, 86.81. $87 per call. <laughs> well, this is a great, I love teaching. No, this is, is like self lecturing this. right now. This is awesome. Sure. Those calls are worth $87 each. And I, I kind of believe that. You don't know when you get to go cash in those chips, yet when you do, 
I bet you can take that every 10 years, calls over the last 10 years, and divide that commission check by however many calls you've done for them and get about 87 bucks. Would you guys agree? 87 bucks a call. Now you're looking at 12. What's 12 times 87? What's the number? 1,044. 1,044 per day if you can focus on it in your 12. Hi, honey, how was work? Good, made over 1,000 bucks today. I don't know when I'll collect the money. <laughs> but I made it. Do you guys disagree with anyone you just went through? Yeah. And it, it, some of you, this is the first time you've heard it. Many of you not. <laughs> when you guys are talking once. about the database, like you're talking about like just everybody you throw in there or not, like, I'm not people that I know would refer me. Like for sure would refer me at some point in time. But when you're talking database, you're talking like everybody. Right? I'm talking about if you don't have enough people in your database referring you, go make more friends and go become that person. There's a lot of people who I have an escrow right now. I didn't know who they were up in May. They're brand new to me. They were referrals. And now they're past clients. And now it's up to me if they will stay there and become raving fans of referral sources. Not up to them, it's up to me. Sorry. We <laughs> <laughs> had a good lifespan. And Rick, I think at some point, since you your conversion rate, it's probably not 50%. Yeah, this was off of. I have a hunch very few of us have the right to actually know what it is because very few of us, consist, including myself, consistently call to actually know. And if you call, you may not document. That's, that's all I want. Yes. All Be that. Because if I am truly calling. 720 or 72, I'm going to know what's happening in their life. Now I'm going to know if they use me or not. But when I don't, because I only just occasionally do it when I, it's convenient or when they pop up, they're not there. So I'm going to keep using 50 and hope that I'm better and plan that I'm normal. Kind of like the price point. I'm not going to adjust it up because I have a couple of good price points. Um, and, like, I know, Deb, you are pretty Jedi with it, and maybe you know, and you know, and you know. And you can go, nope, of my database. Because, frankly, if, as soon as someone says, not everyone, but if, if someone's like, not using you, and here's why, I like you still, but not going to use you. Guess what they no longer are part of? Database. There's a, a vendor, and I used them, and given a lot of money this year. And I prospected back, and he told me, he's like, my wife's, Best friends are real <coughs> You're I'm sorry. Like, Got to go with the wife. I was like, I get it. I was like, what if? He's like, no. I was like, what if? It? No. I was like, fair enough. And I'm not going to, I'm going to go find someone else instead of him to call. Mm -hmm. Because if I have a capacity of 12 a day, then I got to choose the best 12. So I think what I struggle with. Yesterday, I probably feel how strong in that like little class that we had with uh, Gene Scott. I love my people, and the problem is I think too much, and they love me too much because, like for example, so last weekend, customers invited me to go canoeing with them down the Um Friday, one wants me to go to Happy Weather because she misses me. Like you know, like another one is inviting my family and I to go on vacation with them to their cabin in Georgia. So like this is. No, but see, this oh, is like, it's like trying real hard to feel sorry for So, so it's like it's almost like I'm crossing that. Like I'm being too personal. Yep. Like, and just that's where I struggle. Like I said, like with my Popeyes, like you, I end up being there for like 45 minutes a person. I think it's a great problem to have, and I think it can, a solution can be throw more events that you get, and they get your FaceTime, okay. and they get it in the masses. So like Maybe you're a monthly event thrower. Because your people want to see you so often. Like, oh my gosh, that sounds so fun. I love Okaiba. It's crazy now. I can't do it this weekend, but you know what? 
why don't you come over here because I'm going to be doing a barbecue with the family on this date. And now you're like, I can't do your invite, but you come to my invite where I only have to be there for all 50 people instead of there one-on-one. I also think people forget that we actually work. That I'm not calling you to be your friend, I'm calling you right. to your business. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding, I'm just because kidding. Because we have, you know, we can do anything all day long. Yeah. Well, well, and that becomes a creativity because that's, I'm not there yet, right? When I'm calling, I'm, I'm catching up, and you're going, hey, come on vacation with me. And you either got to say yes, and when you say no, if, you, if it's no because I truly can't versus no because I don't want to, it's two very different no's. And the easy way to say, no, I can't, however, please come to this event, I mean, I still love you, so I want to see you, that just doesn't fit my schedule. It's almost like I feel guilty if I say no. It's like I had one, they invited me to come to their condo at the beach, and I'm like, I'm so sorry, I can't make it, and they were like, the kids are... You wouldn't feel as guilty if you reciprocated with an invite. And you treat people how you treat people how to treat them. Yeah. And so I really think you, one of your strategies should be more events. How many events do you do a year? So do one. Probably because you're too busy. <laughs> when you're too busy, you're doing a lot of individual. If you had to have lunch with everyone in this room, you can make a choice to go have 25 lunches or one big massive lunch. So that's where you're at right now. Yeah. And then you get your time back. Yep. Turned out to you is super valuable. We've got 33 minutes. We're going to go through this. Was this Legion good session for you? Yes. Yes. Database. <laughs> Saturate. Cement. Connect. Convert. This is a fun chart, I thought, talking about seller listings versus buyers. And this is average. This is they take stats. If your GCI is 40 grand, you're probably doing around a 60-40. If your GCI is 80 grand, you're probably still doing around a 60-40. If your GCI is 150, you're still slightly higher in the buyers. If your GCI is 250, you're 50-50. When it becomes here, you become higher in the seller. So if you wanted to use your stats on that page one of what is it, and you don't know it, maybe you can use what's your GCI and punch in these numbers. Yep. I, I know that. Whoever has been like ready for a business, I also I don't know if there's people that have been in the business over five years like I have that noticed that there is more the percentage of listings are going up, not necessarily always for your GCI, because that's what I have noticed. You know, have a validation for that? Is your percentage shifting? Here's what I'm going to say no. The aggregate stats, there's no buyer's side without a listing side. So you might be getting more, but as a whole, it's, the same. it's always 50-50. It's never not 50-50. You can't buy a house without someone listing it. With the exception of a builder. You can throw in a builder with weird stuff. It just depends on what you're getting. Okay. Workshop, she's got you. That's Tuesday. <clears throat> Budget model. We're going to do 30 minutes for the next three because we're going to fly through these. This is done for us. Three areas of focus, natural rhythm, budget categories, we the budget model. <laughs> How many of you would you say you're a new agent? Less than six months. Raise your hand. Proud. Okay. Solo agent, longer than six months. That's me right now. Agent on a team. She just on. Or a mega agent because you have a team. <laughs> Tell us why. Okay. We're going to lead with the revenue. We're going to play red light, green light, and stick to the flipping budget. Okay. Is it true? Make money before you spend it. Yes. Yes, it's true. Thank you. Brad. Yes. I'm cheap. Build your business on its own money. Now, this is with a grain of salt. Because if this was absolute, then not a single one of us would have ever got licensed. Agreed? Yep. Yes. Because it all takes at least an initial capital contribution to get things rolling. Yes. This is more of before you go frivolously marketing and frivolously doing big things. Is it in the budget to your plan and in your capital and in 
It's thought out. It's not just, yes, sounds like a great idea. It'll pay for itself, or pay for itself, or pay for itself. Because then you have like 19 just to have everything paid for. I look at it as if I spend this money, it never comes back to me, am I willing to lose it? Kind of is. And that's where red light, green light comes in. Yeah. Um, generate revenue in your real estate business, that in turn will fund the growth of your business. Red light, green light. When things aren't working, stop spending money or time there. When things are, keep proceeding. Every 90 days, at least with the first check-in, 90 days. Then at least annually. Perfect example of this. We were doing some postcards, just listed, just sold, farming postcards. After three different sets of postcards, of 500 some odd postcards, it cost me 250 bucks. I'm going, hello. I got 3,000 mailers in the mail and not a single phone call. I red lighted that sucker and put that money I was putting in postcards into online social media because that's where people are clicking. So I red lighted it. Yes, ma'am. I noticed like, that if you're going to mail something out and not follow it up with a phone call, You've wasted your time and the stamp that you, you know that you put on the envelope. You so prospecting based, marketing enhanced. Mm -hmm. If you mail without a call, you are marketing based, prospecting non-existent. Mm -hmm. So that just validates what it was. Absolutely. Which goes to the point: if you mail your farm to 500 homes, yet you neglect to ever door knock or meet people in your farm, what are you doing? Because if you're going to do that strategy, you better go have the budget of Robert Palmer or John Morgan <laughs> so they also see you on TV and on the billboard Yeah. yeah. because you are going for a branding position. Mm -hmm. They're not going to remember your name when they see you in the mail amongst other junk mail once a month. Mm -hmm. They're going to remember who you are and you knock on the door and you throw that Easter egg hunt in the, in the neighborhood. Call the cops on you. <laughs> what? Or they call the cops on you. Whatever works. I know. Never <laughs> <laughs> Every time we go down door knocking. Never, like, so here's your here's your averages. Your GCI. And this is the average that they just interviewed people who are doing this. I would say use this number if you are 350 or less. Use these percentages. You'll notice there are percentages. <clears throat> this all has a budget based off percentages. So if you do 35,000 and you stick with the same percentage, this should be 8,500. This should be 12,200, 1,000 bucks a month. That income will be about 14,000. Was that? Huh, yeah. And most of the time, if you're doing 35, even more than 14, you're probably robbing your business and not putting a thousand bucks a month back into it. Therefore, you do this year over year instead of getting an ROI and growing with it. Does that make sense? Say that one more time. If you are netting a higher percentage, you really don't control cost of sale, do you? So if someone gives you a referral, you can say no thanks, you to mess up my cost of sale percentages. <laughs> right? So it's kind of, you, it, it is what it is. What you can control, because you can say yes or no to, is your operating expenses. And most people, if they're going, ooh, this is not as big as I want, most will say, instead of increasing this, I'll just cut this, now I get the stuff I want. And therefore, they just do this year over year. Because when you put in 122000 what do you get back next year? 450000 You see that concept? <clears throat> Moral of the story is stick to the budget. Who's got a closing coming up? Okay, uh, who hasn't talked about? <laughs> Trisha. Can I hear your name again? Chris. Chris. Can you share with us when is your closing? On the second. How much is your GCI? Your gross. Everyone gets it. Two fifty five. And what percentage? Two and a half. Two and a half. So you're about sixty eight hundred. That's your sixty eight hundred. Now you'll be slightly higher than 23 because you're under cap right now. Once you cap, you stop paying, you'll be closer to this number. But right now, off the bat, now if you were to put 35% of 6,800 and leave it for your business, and actually take 12% of that and go reinvest it somewhere, that's going, where can you go take 
seven hundred dollars, twelve percent of six thousand eight hundred, to reinvest it into a lead generation, marketing or prospecting that you can go get another contract from. <clears throat> that makes sense. Mm -hmm. As opposed to taking six thousand eight hundred and going, sweet, look what I made, honey. Because that's not your money. Does that make sense? This is how we get that compound growth. Okay. Can we have a marketing class of which one of the people find just the highest return ROI? So when we do have that money, we can. What kind of answer? Database. Again, specifically, what have people have done? So what have they done? Like this is your budget model. This is why we're not going to dive into it. Because guess what? It's, it's a model. Follow model. Now, the way you're going to know where you fall is by having a what? Yeah. You know. Because this is a budget. If you don't have a P and L to compare it to, and I say, hey, how are you doing compared to your budget? You go, I don't. Monday at one p.m. We kill it. You know. Right. So it's no way we do these other. Oh, this is coming my way. Oh, and then when you're with your coach or with your agent services, your accountability or whomever you are accountable to, you can go, well, I need to spend 35%, and it turns out I'm spending 20%. So I'm under budget by 15%, which is about $2,300. So I really need to think about where can I invest $2,300. That would be the best of our life. That's the business conversation we're thinking about right now. As a rainmaker in the room, these people who are working for you and giving you their cost of sale, they're counting on you to do good in this department right here. They're counting on you to keep great leverage, to have great agent systems, to throw great events, to have the closing gifts that are just, they're paying you a premium so they don't have to do it. And the biggest thing that I encourage anyone who joins the team to do is ask their team leader They'll open the books so you can see what their budget and PL looks like. Because I promise about 90% of the team leaders will not have it or be grossly under budget. They don't like when I tell them that. Well, it's true. They give these team leaders 50%, the team leaders pocket most of it, and shortchange the other things. So, soapbox you again. Sorry. And I, I don't think I'm talking to you in this room, so I don't feel bad saying it. Some people in this office, I probably would be talking to you. Okay, natural rhythm, here's your books. Examine them once a month. This does not have to be a thorough examination. This is like, yep, yeah, it's in alignment. Yep, yeah, it's good. Keep a monthly budget. Based on what I've spent, how's next month looking? How am I doing? What's my ROI? Address it on a weekly basis so you're maintaining it. So I've got a bookkeeper now because I just said, I'm not going to maintain this. this is, I'm not going to be great at this. So I just send receipts, I email receipts, I go, here you go, please address this because I'm going to ignore it and procrastinate. It's going to snowball. And look for variances. Variances say, I'm over budget, what happened? I'm under, what happened? Maybe I'm over budget my education because I just went to family reunion and it just spent 40% of my education budget and it's February. That's okay, because the next three months I have a pretty light education load. It's gonna balance it out. See how that works? Yes, ma'am. With your having someone balance your books for you, are you considering that leverage or an expense? Like, does that person hold you accountable to like, no, no, stop shopping? Leverage is an expense. Yeah. You know, leverage is an expense. Like that's gonna help you. Special. It'll help you keep your business under. It's, you know, it, when this person books, bills me, it will be under my operating expenses of leverage. Uh -huh. So it's, yes. Yeah, I wonder if there would also be accountability to it, or if they're just plus or anything for you. So it can be. It doesn't have to be, though. To add a little, call me when I hit this much. Like, yeah, I think it could be, but it also might not be their job or skill set to analyze. <clears throat> it might just be to keep it clean and get a report. Mm -hmm. You've got to be the one who analyzes your books. Yeah. Business, you have to analyze it. You should be looking at your here's the cost of sale for a bunch of categories. Again, most of this room is single agents, we're not going to have into this too much. But this is what the seller side cost of sale eventually is, and the buyer side cost of sale eventually is. When you look at that 35 percent or 48 or 50 expenses, 
By the way, what's the most expensive percentage-wise place to be? Yeah. Here's the interesting. Watch this. You're gonna gross 350 and net 147, or literally double your gross and only net 63 more. Is it because you're you're now paying on admins and you just did a big leverage shift? Yeah. Yeah. Your leverage you more. your expenses and your admin yeah. went way up. Single agent. What are the first two hires you make in a team? Admin, admin. admin. There it is. Now watch what happens. You add another 300,000, you only net 40. What the heck? You're telling me I can make 350 and do 147, or if I go add 650,000 more, I barely make 100 grand more? You get your life back. Yeah. You, get, you get your time back for sure. And this is historically the toughest part for agents of where you see the rainmakers burn out. Because they're turning and burning buyers' agents. They're not quite rolling to have a great operation department. It's kind of like, I mean, sometimes I feel like they're herding cats and just kind of, it all still. it's like, oh, I can't get out of the grind because I'm constantly just replacing and still doing. And when you break through it, it's like getting to the other side of a storm. Because watch what happens this next chunk. Right. You just doubled your net. I found that pretty interesting. Because mm -hmm. I see it. Agents who do 100 units and 20 to 25 million, they're stuck. But when they break through 40 million, they spring shot up to 100 million. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Your expense breakdown looks like this salaries, legion, coaching, education, so on and so forth. Budget model's done. Good? Good. Sure. Fantastic. Workshop Tuesday. <laughs> we have two. Yeah. Tuesday and next time. <laughs> Word model. Here's the Cliff No version. This is a team that can and will do 350 sides. Does this make sense? No one in this room has this team or this business that has individuals for each spot doing 350. Yet these are all jobs that have to be done. If you're a solo agent, you just have 15 different jobs that you're clocking in and clocking out of. Here's gonna be my quick form chart scenario. We're going to divide the room in a third. It's kind of in a half right now. So we're going to do the first of this level. You guys are my legion department. Good? You guys are my sales department. You guys are my operations. You good? We all just got hired. We're all now one team. You guys have a job to do right now. Because guess what? We don't have anyone. No pipeline. Okay? If there's no pipeline, what is my sales agent going to do? Nothing. Nothing. I'm kind of like, well, nothing going on. And if there's nothing in the pipeline, nothing under contract, what's my admin team going to do? Nothing. I'm here for you. So we can have a choice. Okay, you six. Go, giddy up. What did you say? Everyone needs to be Hey, admin, let's go. Sales, let's go. Everyone's in the Legion because now we're doing this. And so what? And so, oh, we got one. Sweet. Now we've got a job for one of you, but not ten of you. So none of you keep lead Jenny. Oh, we got one. You see how this works? Yeah. If we had a team, it would be common sense. Here we are. All hands on deck. Now, as a solo agent, if we have nothing in the pipeline, then how many hours a day should we lead you? All of them. Yet sometimes we're like, oh, thank God it's 11, I can be done. <laughs> my two hours, I'm done. You're like, well, I don't know what's going on, so I can go home now. Yeah. Are we? Yes. Don't we? Yes. I did my two hours. Thank God, that's done. Again, my time blocking class is going to be service your clients or find your clients. It's going to be a lot of time which you choose. That's your org chart. Now, when your sales and your legion is taking so much time that you can no longer keep up with your admin, 
What do you do? Admin. Yeah. You don't go, well, I got a service admin, so just for two or three weeks, I'm going to ignore whatever we're going to say, hey, you six, they've got like nine in the escrow. Do me a favor, stop legioning and go over here and help them close some deals out. Can you imagine a team ever saying that? No. Don't we do that as solo agents? No. Oh my gosh, I have so much business, I'm going to stop creating more and just go service it. Welcome to the roller coaster. Think like a business owner, and the stuff we do every day makes no sense. Right? Stop thinking like an independent realtor. Think like a business owner. And think about this conversation that says, if I don't have escrow, then number one, you could say, I don't want to ever touch this. I'm going to get rid of this right off the bat by hiring his wife.